I like this. I don't, 
like how the storyline goes, but I actually got into cold, you know, I watched Murder House more though, like, I watched all of the episodes of Murder House and cold, I didn't watch it all, but I just thought it was, I liked the drama in it, but I didn't watch all of it, I know, right, like, why is it bidding of something that I've already watched, I know, right, but I'll put that second to last. It's just, yeah. It's set in 2017. The fictional town of Brooksville Heights, Michigan, is left divided in the wake of Donald Trump's election. As present local restaurant owner, Allie, well, I'm just going to say Allie, is left utterly distraught along with her wife, Ivy, despite the help of her psychiatrist, Dr. Vincent, Allie becomes increasingly unstable in the following weeks. As her long repressed phobias begin to reemerge, reemerge, and they begin to affect her relationships with her wife and their son, Oz. Oh, that's why I liked it, okay? I liked that little relationship that they had, and I felt like, um, the cult was at the beginning. I really liked it. I thought it was funny that um, Emma Roberts was killed off like in the first couple episodes. I was that what made me mad. I love Emma Roberts, her acting, and I loved her with Evan Peters like in the in the um, show. But let's not get into in real life, okay? So they have a son across town, misogyn misogynistic. Guy, Evan Peters. Yeah, Evan Peters scared me on this one. Okay, we're just at the election, but basically it's all about cults and stuff and them doing horrible stuff. And what really made me not like it as much is because, like, that scene where he, where he strangled his sister, oh my goodness, like, that's like traumatizing. I didn't watch it to that far. Um, and then scene where they saw their parents like dead like that. I was like, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I just don't get get Kai, Evan Peters' character, why he would do that to his sister. I know he thought they she portrayed him, but still. But yeah. I just saw a clip of that. Of that. Okay, number three. of the 
St. Pierre Vanderbilt, her personal assistant Mallory, hairstylist Mr. Gallant, his grandmother Evie, talk show host Dina Stevens, Stephen's son Andre, young adults. Okay, there's a lot of people. Okay, whatever. But they go to a they they can do a refuge in a follow shelter named Outpost Three. Run with an iron fist by Lamina Venable and Miriam Mead, along with the fist, a Brutist, a Brutish item. Y'all say, Look, that's how you know this show is, is, is out this world, it's crazy because you can't even read the words. Okay, but yeah, they it's basically an apocalypse and they're just hiding out. And it's these crazy people there, you know. I thought it was, um, I really like Billy Lord, fun fact, Billy Lord, the one in the show, her mom is Carrie Fisher, who was Princess Leia in Star Wars. And I love her, I love her, like, like her, I don't know if it's cynical, but her, like, just serious attitude. I just love that, but not I wasn't like that in real life. But she just reminds me of my sister, just like just serious, just just it seems like you just don't give a, a rat's butt. Okay. So next is hotel. Okay, I like this. I thought it was really okay, I if not the hotel I think of you remember when that it was it it was the black girl what was her name she uh it was funny because i don't know if it was the last episode but it correlated with one of the episodes but i think most of the episodes do but when she they were like something about whoever walks in the door we're gonna take her blood or, or drink her blood or something i can't remember and or we're gonna kill her y'all tell me if y'all remember this scene and she just walks in like she's in and she's the same person from Coven and it's so funny she just walks in and then they attack her like that just was so funny to me <laughs> and so she was stuck there I just that was just too funny I gotta go back and look at this scene y'all I bet it's not even funny but I thought just thought it was so funny because it's like he didn't expect her to come in trying to find it. Okay, Hotel. And I really liked the suspense in it. Like, it's just like, what happened and stuff. But some of them of the scenes were you kind of knew what was going to happen. And Lady Gaga, you did so good. You did so good. Okay. So, it's the season follows the strange and dangerous happenings that seem to center around the Retro Hotel Cortez in downtown Los Angeles, California, initially built as a secret torture chamber to fulfill the violent desires of founder James Patrick March. So the detective John Lowy goes to the hotel based on intel from an anonymous tip. So they can investigate some strings of murders, each of which exemplify a sin and violation of one of the Ten Commandments. He has become estranged from his. I can. Is that how you say? Estranged from his wife Alex, who suffers from dep depression, and his daughter Scarlett. After the disappearance, their son Holden, five years earlier. The hotel is led by March's fashionista widow, Elizabeth Johnson, Lady Gaga, and as she also is known as the Countess, who was mutated into a vampire by your former lover. Okay, but anyways, I'm not going to read all of it, but I thought it was kind of crazy that he ended up finding his, okay, I ain't gonna talk about it, but I just 
just really like that. I, I know I'm already spoiling it, but I don't want to keep on spoiling more and more for people. Okay, you know I spoil a lot. Okay, you're probably thinking, girl, why haven't you talked about Rowan up yet? That should be last. It's number five. Rowan up is number five for me, and I really liked it because it had some funny uh, moments to me. Like that actor who played um, one of the characters on there. Like, I do not like her character. Like, I think her acting is so bad. I'm not gonna tell y'all who it is, but y'all probably know. I thought it's my younger sister, and we both were saying like, I don't like her acting. Like, it's so like you can tell she acting, but I'm not gonna say who it is. Okay, so I liked Roanoke. I don't know why I liked it so much. I don't even know. I just felt like there was a lot of twists and turns and, and a lot of, I like that they added, well, don't they all, they added, you know, of course, the history, true history in there, but I think they did that to all of them, but you could really tell they did for that one, and I liked how they used the space, but I know that's not my favorite. I just loved it. Okay, so it follows the supernatural events that occur in a renovated farmhouse in North Carolina, which is situated on the land where the Roanoke colony moved after their infamous 1580s disappearance. In 2015, Shelby Miller, her husband Matt, Sister Lee Harris recounted their harrowing experience living at the farmhouse a year prior in a popular documentary series titled My Roanoke Nightmare, including their encounters with the violent and vengeful ghosts of the house's previous residents in the Roanoke colony. The cannibalistic book family who lived nearby in the beautiful yet terrifying Celtic which is person who is got who is got that uh, Lady Gaga that's the girl that's the person who played it and uh, the documentary becomes a huge success featuring dramatic reenactions of the middle layers of story starring all these people but that was a bad story so Roanoke is so good I really need to rewatch Roanoke I need to watch all of them, but it's probably going to take me years because I'm still on these K-dramas, y'all. So let's go to the number six. The third last one. So number three is Coven. I know this is people's top, probably the second one will be there. This probably will be people's second, but nope. Okay. Nope. I like Coven, but I was sad that Evan Peters couldn't talk, but he was, he was fine, this one is, if I could rank this one for him, this would be two for him, for him looking the best, I think, I think, Coven is so funny though, I really like that aspect, my favorite was Madison, of course, like, I love, like, the, the main girl. I've always have. I don't like mean girls in real life. I like nice girls, of course, but I just like the drama. But I don't like drama like in my life. I like it in TV, okay? It's fake, so I just tell myself that I didn't like um, the main character, Zoe, because she was too nice. <laughs> Y'all, I love, she wasn't drama, okay? That's why I didn't like her in um, Murder House, because I like the main characters, but not some. Well, sometimes I don't like the main characters when they're just, I can't explain it, but when they bring the funny aspect in it, then I love, like, the main girls. It's the season that follows the dwindling descendants of the witches who survived the Salem witch trials and their struggles to hide their 
identity in the modern world to also share this genetic affliction or being subject to violate violent attacks from outside forces such as voodoo. Practitioners Zoe, a young teenager completely unaware of the existence of witches, discovers her identity as a Salem descendant after a violent accident that causes the death of her boyfriend. Okay, y'all, I thought that was so funny when um, Madison, she just flipped the bus over. And I, I, it was so sad when she got, I don't know if she got raped. I can't remember if it was she got raped or sexually assaulted. I don't even remember. But I just thought that was so funny how she was just like, she just flipped the bus up and she was just like, Like 
strikes as Elsa's second in the command by maintaining law and order under Lieutenant, a strong man from Ethel's past and Jimmy's biological father, Dale Toledo, and his three-breasted wife, Des Desiree Dupre. I act like I haven't seen him, but I haven't seen him in a long time. So they arrived to join the freak show to drum up business and save her troop once and for all. Elsa also recruits conjoined twin sisters Bet and Dot Tatler to perform for her show. In a time when the era of television is beginning to reign high above sideshow acts, these individuals must overcome those who persecute them based on their looks. However, as the season unfolds, it is revealed that multiple dark enti entities have taken up a residence in Jupiter with all of their eyes being set on the freaks. On the freaks, a con man named Stanley, posing as a Hollywood executive, executive he arrives with his young prodigy, Maggie Esmeralda, who becomes involved with Jimmy. The wealthy and spoiled Dan DeMott, enabled by his dotting mother, Gloria, develops an unhealthy obsession with the freaks, particularly Bet and Dot. Perhaps the most dangerous of them all is a mysterious deformed killer clown known only as Twisty Rex Havoc on Jupiter and appears to be targeting freaks and towns people alike. Okay, I liked I know I loved Twisty. Um like I loved it uh, that part of the show. I don't love him. He's a killer. But I'm saying like I liked how they in and it wasn't too much like apocalypse and um goal it wasn't it, the storyline the storyline didn't seem all over the place even though to some it would have been and while I was reading it I'm just thinking of scenes that I really liked I liked that Maggie who plays who Emma Robert plays I like that she that she um was like a like a spy and stuff so that was cool so y'all know what number one is asylum i love asylum i watched that like three times probably but with me i cannot watch something like if i watched it before i don't watch it all the way through, like I, I skip scenes. Uh, I almost got it in my mouth. But yeah, I skip scenes because I just like don't want to see the same thing over and over again. But I would always skip to the romantic scenes because I'm a ro hopeless romantic. And I just really like the that um the chemistry between Evan Peters and well Kit let me find it. But Kit was so fine, I'm not gonna see. I couldn't remember none of his names for the other one, but I can remember his name in Asylum. It was Kit. If it wasn't wouldn't have been the second season, I probably wouldn't have tried to watch the other seasons because it was a dud. Murder House wasn't good to me. Okay. So, Asylum it is set in 1964. The season follows the patients and staff members of the church on Briarcliff Manor, located in Massachusetts, which was founded to treat and house the criminally insane Kid Walker. To find who if Peters. Okay. Kid Walker. Of being a prolific serial killer named Bloody Face after the disappearance of his wife Alma, though he claims she was abducted by aliens. 
is incarcerated at Briarcliff. This speaks the inches of ambitious lesbian journalist Lana Winters, who is yearning to find a story for her big break. At Briarcliff, Kit meets the other patients, many of whom claim to be unjustly institutionalized, including microcephalic peep, pepper, peeper, I was about to say peeper, microcephalic pepper, nymphomaniac Shelley, whose cheating husband hypocritically committed her after finding her in bed with two guys. This is so intriguing because it's just like, nobody would go to jail for me, nobody would go to the same insane as asylum for that, like now, and the unassuming Grace Bertrand from France, believe, believed to be a violent serial killer, kid becomes a subject of interest, and so they have these doctors, Oliver Tritson and the sadistic Dr. Arthur Arden, who is scary, the latter of whom routinely conducts scientific operations on patients. The institution is run under the of the stern sister Jude, as well as her sickening command, the naive sister Mary Eunice, or Eunice, I don't know, Eunice, and the founder of the institution. We don't care. Okay. 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 All that subject to supernatural and scientific influences, including demonic possession and extra. Abduction. I don't know. It's late, guys. I ain't read. Uh, it's extra terrestrial abduction. Okay. I loved Sister Mary being possessed. Okay. I loved her being possessed. Who says that? I thought it was so funny when you know, cause the um was the doctor he liked. He hated like girls who were like messing around. And just not so simple, and and just how can I say it? Like she was reserved. He liked reserved women, and she she was that. And so he, they really liked her, and like that she wasn't, you know, wanting to do stuff with guys and stuff. But when she got when she when the ghost when a demon or something, I guess I think it was a demon took over her body, y'all. It was so funny when she came in with some red lipstick and they're not, they can't wear no red lipstick. So it was so funny when um, she walked in with some red lipstick and she's like, uh-uh, like, cause she was, she was gonna mess with them. And he was like, you need to do something. I don't remember, but y'all, he was getting mad. He was like, uh-uh, this ain't you, sweetheart. You can go back. He wasn't, he wasn't going. Okay. I really like that, and I like that character for some reason, but I, what I didn't like about it was that at the end when he had kids with his, the girl who got abducted, his wife that he got abducted, and the, the, um, then he got married to Grace, I think, was it Grace? they got married, they both got married, but I hated the, the, um, his wife so much because I was, I forgot that he was even married at once because since he kind of had his own life after his wife, he ended up falling for Grace. I hated that she killed Grace. See, I don't remember if she really got killed or what happened to she. I'm glad that he took her to go to the insane song. But I don't know, guys. Tell me if y'all if y'all made it this far. Tell me. So I didn't like when she killed her, but it was good that he sent her to the insane asylum to get her treated. I wanted Kit to be with the girl that he met at the insane asylum. Okay, 